Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to another episode on your favorite Little Slaw YouTube channel. So today in this video, we're going to see about the differences between SOAP and REST APIs. So there are a lot of differences between the SOAP and REST APIs, although they both uh, look common or uh, they both look similar or the way they transport or the way they uh, communicate with the interfaces, with the servers. But still, there are like lots of differences as well in terms of its architecture, in terms of its connectivity. So we'll see them one by one in this video. And before we move on to this video, this is me, Yavasan Shanmugam. I welcome you all to our Little Sla YouTube channel. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And also one more thing, uh, you all know uh, I'm talking about this uh, for the last few days, uh, which is I'm having, I'm conducting a load runner session on September 14th and 15th. So if you are still interested to join the session on september 14th and 15th please do message me in the whatsapp and we'll connect over the whatsapp and i'll share you more information and uh, if you like this video please do uh, give a thumbs up and share the video with your friends and also don't forget to join my channel if you are interested to get more quality content and for any one to one support and coming back to this video that we are discussing uh, which is what is the difference between the soap service or the soap api uh, and the REST API. So the first difference, I would say, in terms of the SOAP versus the REST API. So the first difference is the in terms of the architecture. So SOAP, which we normally call a simple object access protocol, and that's a protocol with a strict set of rules. And if you're someone who have used it or who have tested it, you know how much strict rules it has and how much standards uh, it has to define, um, and and basically it's defined by the W3C consortium, which is World Wide Web Consortium. So the SOAP enforces, or the uh, SOAP is enforced to have a specific structure for messaging by the W3C, uh, the World Web World, uh, sorry, World Wide Web Consortium, which includes an envelope. So you must have an envelope. It must have a header, and it it should have a body. So this structure ensures that SOAP based services can communicate consistently regardless of the underlying platform. So how does it communicate? So SOAP typically uses a remote procedure call, which in, uh, in short form we call as RPC style communication, where methods are called remotely and responses are returned. So this makes it highly suitable for operations that require complex processing like transactions. So what is all about REST APIs architecture? So when it comes to REST API, REST is not a protocol, but an architectural style that defines a set of principles for designing network networked applications. So it's built around resources which are identified by URLs and uh, they use standard HTTP methods like get method, the post method, so get where we used to read the data and when it comes to post where we used to write the data. And then we have put, we have delete methods as well to perform operations on these resources. So that is very simple in terms of the architecture because it is mainly designed for networking or to communicate, to connect within the applications and it's built around the resources which are identified by the URL. So it's just about the URL and just about the standard HTTP methods. So again, REST is a resource based, meaning that each URL represents a resource and the actions which is uh, create or read or update or delete are performed using standard HTTP, HTTP methods. So this design makes RESTful services more flexible and easier to work with, especially for web-based applications. That's the reason uh, we um, know like most of the uh, web-based applications has REST API in it. So in the first, uh, difference in terms of the architecture when comparing with the SOAP and REST API. The REST API is more flexible and it's more easier to work with, especially for web-based applications. And that's the reason the REST API is used across all the web applications. And when it comes to the SOAP, it's more complex, but still um, it's, I mean, like it's highly suitable for operations that require complex processing like transactions because SOAP uses the remote procedure called style communication where methods are called remotely and responses are returned. So this method again makes it highly suitable for operations that require complex processing. So if you are someone who wants to have complex processing, then SOAP is your choice. And if you want someone who is to have a very uh, more flexible and easier to work with, then you go with the REST API. So the next part we'll see with the communication style. So how does the SOAP and 
how the how does the rest apis communicate so now we'll see the second difference between the soap api and the rest apis or soap services and the rest api so the second part is the communication style so as we have as i already told you in the very first difference about the rpc the remote procedure call so soap is designed around rpc where the client calls a method on a remote server and if it were a local method so the server processes this request and returns a response so this approach is useful for tightly coupled operations where the client and server need to closely interact so let me just again reiterate so rpc the remote procedure call or the soap is designed around rpc where the client calls a method on a remote server right if it if it were a local method so the server processes this request and returns a response back so this approach is useful for tightly coupled operations where the client and servers need to closely interact but when it comes to the rest uh, the resource base so rest focuses on resources rather than action so each resource is represented by a url and the operations are performed through http methods like i have told you already so they operate through http methods and this decoupling of operations and resources makes rest more flexible and easier to scale so again even in uh, this scenario like if you are someone who is looking for operations which needs to be closely uh, which needs to closely interact then you must use client uh, like in, in terms of client and server if they want to like closely interact then your choice should be so on the other hand if you want a more flexible and easier to scale like for example nowadays uh, the business wants to scale their applications bigger and bigger so in that scenario you will not be going with soap and you will have to go with the rest api so if this is i mean like these are some of the questions which i'm discussing are the questions which are asked in the uh, interview so you can give this as a difference so if you are someone who wants to scale your application then rest api is always your choice of uh, using your application so that's a difference if you are someone who wants to have a closely interact needs to have a close in close interaction then soap is your option and if you want to someone who wants a more flexible and uh, easier to scale then rest api is your choice so now let's move on to the third one which is the data format so the third difference between soap and rest api is the data format so when it comes uh, to the difference between the soap uh, service or the soap service i mean soap apis and the rest api so the data format so when it comes to data formats we do have uh, the xml so soap uses xml as its message format which includes the envelope and the header and the body so i have even uh, discussed about this in the very first difference so an xml has a format so it has an envelope it has a header and it has a body so xml is verbose and it can lead to a larger messages sizes so which impact the performance because when you are sending a large amount of data the first thing is like it will impact the network right the network bandwidth it would impact the latency and then finally it would need lot of disk input output so these are all in terms of the performance these are in terms of the performance metric if we see they might look like a smaller uh, impact but still at the end it will give a big difference because like i told you it has to follow the uh, format it has like too complex and then again in terms of the message sizes since they are verbose it will lead to a larger message sizes and that will impact the performance but xml structures nature make it highly suitable for complex data exchanges and validation so that's again see although soap has uh, an area where it has to improve in terms of this message sizes but still it has it is suitable highly suitable for complex data exchanges and validation so in if your application is something which needs complex data exchanges and validation then soap is always your choice but on the other hand the rest apis has a lots of support from different formats like it supports json uh, it supports xml html even plain text again json is particularly popular we all know because it's very lightweight but on the other hand soap has the xml the verbose which is highly which is a larger uh, message sizes but on the other hand uh, json is very lighter weight 
and it's easy to read and parse, which makes RESTful APIs faster and more efficient. So the flexibility in data formats allow REST to be more adaptable to different application needs. So again, in every set of differences we were seeing, um, REST APIs as a higher end, like it's scalable, it is flexible, it supports multiple formats, but again, I would say SOAP also is required in some areas where you need to handle complex data exchanges and validation. So that's the main difference about the data format. So again, uh, the uh, XML is verbose, it can lead to a larger message sizes, but REST APIs, it supports multiple formats and it's very flexible and it's also very lighter and in terms of data format, it allows REST to be more adaptable to different application needs. So now we'll move on to the fourth one, which is the protocol support. So when it comes to the protocol support, so, so far when we see the differences, everywhere REST has a higher hand or an upper hand, I would say. But when it comes to the protocol support, you will be surprised that SOAP supports multiple protocols. Yes, you hear it right. SOAP supports multiple protocols. It actually works with multiple protocols. I mean, SOAP can operate over various protocols, like what you see here is true. It supports HTTP, SMTP, the, the main, uh, or the major protocol where we connect the mail email service, the simple mail transfer protocol. It supports JMS, Java Messaging Service, and TCP. We all know the TCP, the Transmission Control Protocol, which is one of the major, major SOAP uh, support services. And this actually makes SOAP versatile for different types of applications, especially those needing reliable messaging or distributed transactions. So now I think you will take a stand for SOAP. Yes, because SOAP, like I told you, it supports multiple protocols like HTTP, SOAP, uh, sorry, HTTP, SMTP, JMS, and TCP. But on the other hand, REST APIs, I know it's very flexible, it's scalable, but still REST is tightly coupled with the HTTP protocol, which is which leverages its method for performing operations. So although REST can theoretically work over other protocols in practice, it predominantly uses HTTP or HTTPS, making it ideal for web applications and services. So yeah, in this, uh, in terms of protocol support, yes, SOAP has one. Actually, it, it nearly supports multiple protocols. And again, there are two critical and very highly important protocols like SMTP, I would say, as JMS in terms of TCP, yes. So now uh, to end this, uh, I'll come up with the performance and bandwidth. So with that, we'll end this for first part of the video and then there are like another three more parts. So please do subscribe to our channel and watch the other videos as well. And it'll definitely help you and I will throw lots and lots of insights into it. So please do watch the entire video of this and then please do watch the other videos as well. So now we'll move on to the next part, which is performance and bandwidth. So now moving to the last difference of this video, which is the performance and bandwidth. Yes, so in fact, I have told you in the uh, previous difference that XML's structure nature makes it highly suitable for complex data and validation, but still it has a larger messages sizes, right? So that is the reason actually uh, SOAP messages typically are larger due to its XML format which will lead to higher bandwidth usage. So that's, I mean, I think we have discussed this point already, but still I'm telling you in terms of performance and bandwidth. So the overhead of parsing and processing XML will also slow down the performance. So this can be a drawback in environments where network resources are limited or where high performance is critical. So if you are someone who is using SOAP services in a, environment where the network resources are limited, like you have very limited network resources or where you have very limited network bandwidth. So you will definitely suffer in terms of performance or in, you will definitely face bottleneck. Or if you are someone who wants a high performance applications, then again, SOAP is not a right choice at this moment, but still it also supports multiple protocols. But in terms of bandwidth usage, it SOAP has actually is using higher bandwidth. I would say so when it comes to the rest api it's very lightweight and efficient like you see so restful services tend to be more lightweight because they can use formats like json yes we discussed that which is a very lightweight uh, format which are more compact than xml again so this results in lower bandwidth usage and faster performance which makes it which makes rest suitable for high performance applications especially those on web again 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 it's more lightweight, it uses less bandwidth, it's generally faster, but 
the key thing is it only supports especially those on the web so yeah it supports web it's very uh, highly performance and bandwidth but still yes soap also has its own advantages because it has multiple sub multiple protocols of what it it makes it it is worth using for complex uh, applications for complex transactions and uh, for complex data exchanges and validations so yeah so equally they have uh, their own advantages and disadvantages so it's always depends on what application is you are using and what is your need what is your objective of using it whether it's data format or whether it's your communication style or whether it's your architecture so yeah with that we come to an end for the day one video on the difference between the soap and rest api so we'll see the other three videos in the coming days and with that i come to an end of this video so uh we'll meet in our next video until then it's bye bye from and your favorite little slaw youtube channel take care and bye bye